All right, back to the Stan Simpson show. We'll continue the discussion real quick. We'll close out the Randy Edsel thing. We're going to do a whole show on this. Paul Pasqualoni, he's here at UConn, off to a tough start as well. Compare his personality with Edsel's. And can he do, can he succeed here? Is he the right fit after year one? Well, I think uh, he's more everyday professional laid back. A little boring for my taste. <laughs> you know, Randy will combat you, so I can't lie about that. Uh, you know, again, it, it's if you're going to put a higher standard for Paul Pascaloni than you did for Randy Etzel the last, say, five or six years, then that's unfair. His, his, his challenge was the same as Randy since uh, the last half dozen seasons, so he's kind of kind of done the same job as Randy, in my mind, uh, over over like the last half dozen years, Randy had more success in a given year. But coming into the season, I had him at seven and five. He's got to like if he wins this game and goes to a bowl game, I'll say he did a good job this year. Okay. It, it, or, it, if he loses, if he gets blown out Saturday and finishes five and seven, I'll call a disappointment. I'll give him now. He was a five-year contract, four-year contract. Same with uh, Randy. Give him his time. Get his guys in there because it's tough when you come in there new when your guys aren't there to coach, right? Well, Very tough. I, I think that's that's one area where you have to kind of give Pasqualoni a little bit of a pass. He comes in and 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 I think one of the things he talks about, Jeff, and he's he's worked this two-quarterback system this year and he's worked it very well and as he said at his press conference earlier this week a lot of that is by design because it kind of forces opponents to have to prepare two different defensive game plans but he all you do, do that, that when you have a star quarterback yeah. you got the veteran sports guys Two quarterbacks, you can't pick one in college football? Come on well, now, he's got Well, he's got a quarterback that really sets up your wildcat running game in Scott McCummings, and he's got a quarterback that's a much better passer and can open up the game a little bit more in, in Johnny McEntee. But one thing Edsel talks about a lot is he prefers that pro set, and he talks about the importance of the quarterback in the pro set. And they have a very good quarterback that he has recruited for next year. But to get back Jeffrey to this... Jeffrey Massick, uh, Jack Cochran's kid, right? Jack, right. But let me Casey tell you Cochran. one thing, Jeff. Two quarterbacks to me tells me you have no quarterback. Right. You're absolutely right. And I think we yeah. all kind of saw that in the beginning of this. I, I think I even made the statement to, to Jake probably after the second press conference of the year. I said, you know, if a guy's got three quarterbacks and he still isn't ready to name a number one, he doesn't have <laughs> got a quarterback. A quarterback. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's made it, he has made it work so far. Uh, and he's in a situation like Edsel was in at Maryland where he comes in, they're not his players. And he's got a kind, what he's done is he's gotten a lot of the players that Randy Edsel recruited to buy in with him like those the two red shirt freshman defensive backs that have really done a lot but, to change. but early it didn't it was kind of rough early I mean, it, it was, it was. so just recent game it was. if Cody Andrews hadn't been busted on a flunk drug test right. they would have been a lot better off let's just be honest he got stuck without a quarterback this year Segway now Penn State Syracuse have you ever seen a more sordid scandal at two big time programs at the same time your thoughts on what's happening there Penn State scandal is the biggest scandal in the history of college sports without a doubt it's sickening. Uh, it's just a lesson, just a lesson for all of us to that invest too much in sports, too much in the power of a college football coach. Uh, it's Money, just, right? Fifty million dollars a year yeah, profit. Yeah, it, 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 right? it's sickening on so levels. They, they, they covered for. They covered for. A, a, what appears to be certainly appears to be a pedophile, and it just makes me sick to my stomach. And uh, I hope that, uh, and that's what jumping just to, over to the Syracuse thing. And they're different. They are different stand in my mind. But the one thing that jumps out at me that really got me upset this week was after ba Jim Bayham came out so strong in defense of Bernie Fine and started in on the uh, the, uh, the alleged victims, you know, saying that you know they call them liars, mm -hmm. saying they wanted the money. Now, whoa, 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 that's the same kind of bull spit that comes out of college coaches that are allowed to get way too powerful. And that and and I I am really thinking long and hard what what my opinion is on whether Beheim should be fired or not. Interesting. I, I am well, not sure. How about the counter this stuff? How about you have a guy, listen, he knows a guy for 40 years, right? Right. The last thing he's thinking, he's been on road trips, he knows his wife, his right. kids. Think of your best friend in life. The last thing you're thinking is that he's a child molester, and you're, you're going to defend your friend on instinct, aren't you? Absolutely. You, you, that's, if, you, you're friends for 50 years. You're my boy. I, I respect that. I respect loyalty. 
Absolutely. However, he crossed the line, started in on calling them liars, saying they wanted money. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's where you go so far over the line that I'm not sure in my heart whether I can reel behind back. And the problem with that is, and I agree with Jeff 100% on this, and the problem with that is you cannot take any allegation by any potential victim in a situation like this lightly into the, your, for your first reaction, your public, per, first public reaction to be an attack on the victim. Let's face it, there are still a lot of things that have to be uncovered in this Syracuse case. It's not like the Penn State case where every time you peeled another layer of the onion, it stunk even worse. There's still a lot that has to come out That's on this. That's the lesson here, right? you got to kind of hold yeah, your serve yeah, a little yeah, bit. Don't, don't get me wrong. There, 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 yeah, there's nobody there that, that's saying that, that Behan covered up something. What I'm saying is if he, by his position, scared off right. potential victims by his brusque over-the-top statements, I'm having a hard time right. in my mind forgiving. By attacking, but, 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 by attacking but, 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 the victims, he may have scared anybody else from uh, making further allegations. Well, how about the flip side, that a victim out there or a victim sees that, gets upset, and says, you know what, he's, he's, he's lying, it's not true, I'm going to come forward. Can it work in the opposite, where it encourages victims to come out and say, no, Beheim's wrong, he's out of line, I'm coming forward? I think there's a lot of shame in the, in the hearts of those uh, kids that have been and young people that have been molested. I don't think there's a, a great r cavalry roar to like come out and charge. And yeah, you know what? You know what's really frightening, and, and, and just to get off these two incidents, the question has come up this week: Is there a culture that exists in sports programs? that sets the stage for incidents like this. Are we just now seeing the tip of an iceberg? That's a topic for the next show we have you guys on. So Sorry, we gotta, I brought it up. <laughs> we got to go now, but it's a good topic, though. Jeff Jacobs, Scott Gray, thanks, guys. We appreciate thanks, it. Dan. When we come back, we'll talk about presidential politics with the University of Hartford professor Bilal Saku. Remember, catch our show 24-7, ctnow.com, slash Dan. Friend us on Facebook, Twitter, too.